Hello everyone, ChargeCoin here. Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be attempting to answer how do we determine what is the best team in Genshin Impact, what kind of criteria needs to be fulfilled, and what is the best team overall, in my opinion. Without further ado, let's begin. Team building is core to the gameplay of Genshin Impact. This of course is linked directly to the core feature of the game, being the gacha system, for you to roll for the characters you want to build your ideal team. For example, it can be a team full of cute characters such as Klee, TT, and so on, or even a full husbando team with characters such as Zhongli, El Hatem, and even a waifu team with characters such as Raiden Shogun, Yai Miko, and so on. Or maybe you just like to follow the meta, you want to build a very strong team that can carry you throughout the abyss very quickly. But I'm here today to share about the best and my favourite team in Genshin Impact. But before you defend your own teams, do hear me out first. Of course it's fun to just create teams that you like. For example, I like creating teams based on my favourite characters that I've obtained in the various nations. For example, I have a Mondstadt team, a Li Yue team, an Inazuma team, a Sumeru team, and an Archon team, and soon hopefully a Fontaine team as well. But not all these teams are great. For example, the Mondstadt team that I have totally doesn't synergize well with each other at all. As you can see here, they are really struggling trying to fight with the Jade Plume Terrace Room. So let me first explain in the video, what do I define as a great team? before showing everybody what my best team is. But of course, do let me state that this is all in my own opinion, and as an AR60 Day 1 Patch 1 Genshin player. You can of course feel free to disagree, or share your own comments or opinions in the comment section below. So, in order to determine what exactly makes a great team in Genshin Impact, we first need to see what are the things that can or need to be done in the game. Let's first talk about vertical traversal, which is basically to travel from point A below to point B above. And so as you can see over here, El Hatem and Kazuha both are able to use their skills effectively to travel very easily from below to the top. But for characters like TT who are shorter, it becomes a lot harder for them to traverse vertically. So what you want is to have characters who can help you do this a lot more easily. So next up, we have lateral traversal, which is basically just moving from point A to point B on a horizontal plane, and can be done through walking or running. Let's first take a look at some of the characters whose skills or abilities are able to help us to get from point A to point B a lot faster. Firstly, we have Tsong Li who is just tall. Ye Lan who can use her E skill to run faster. Ayaka who has a special dash. Sayu who is able to use the E skill to move faster as well. And finally, Yao Yao. Let's see all of these 5 contestants who can move the fastest. As you can see here, all our other contestants have finished except for Yao Yao. So the moral here is that in a good team, you want someone who can traverse faster. Next, we have to talk about battling, which is one of the core gameplay features of Genshin Impact. There are two areas in Genshin which require battling, the first one being the Spiral Abyss, and the second being Open World Combat. And let's take a look at both of these. To find a good team for using in the Spiral Abyss, there are many team comms that you can find online, such as the one that I'm showing right now. But to simplify, you need a team that has a good synergy together. What constitutes as a good synergy is A. Good Elemental Resonance. For example, the Pyro Resonance can give an attack increase of 25%. B. Elemental Reactions that complement each other. For example, the melt reaction or even the vaporize reaction in this case. And last but not least is skills and ultimates that work well with each other. For example, in this case, Nahida will apply Dendro to the enemies, 
while Bennett will apply the burning reaction. After that, Kanyu can apply melt based on this burning reaction. One of such teams that is able to fulfill these three criteria is the famously strong team known as the Raiden National Team, which consists of Raiden, Xiangling, Xingqiu, and Bennett. Firstly, there is the Pyro Resonance, which provides a 25% increase to everyone's attack. During battle, Raiden's E skill increases the damage of party members. Then, Bennett's ultimate is there to buff attack, Sing Chu is to provide the Hydro application, while Xiangling vaporizes Sing Chu's swords. Finally, Raiden's ultimate helps to recharge everyone's ultimates so that the mayhem can start all over again. It's an extremely strong and balanced team that makes it perfect for clearing the Spiral Abyss. For the open world, there are mainly three areas of things that need to be done. Firstly, there's exploration, followed by farming, and last but not least, daily commissions. As there are a lot of small enemies around that you do not really want to waste your burst energy for, it is important to see where the majority of the team's damage lie. Is it in their burst, skill, or normal attack? If the answer is burst, or if their skill has too long of a cooldown, that team may not be that viable for the open world. For example, while the Raiden team showed earlier is perfect for the Abyss, their burst needs to be used to deal good damage. It becomes a problem because enemies are usually dead before the energy can be recharged. For example, in this case, as you can see, nobody's burst is up yet, even though we just killed a monster over here. However, if we choose not to use the ultimate of the Raiden national team and only use their skills, we'll soon find out that it is not really strong enough to defeat the enemy and will take a lot longer than usual, as you can see in the footage over here. As such, you want a team that can deal good damage quickly without having to rely on their ultimates. For example, in this case, for Kanyu and Yoimiya, both can deal fast damage without having to rely on their ultimates. For the next aspect of what makes a good team, we have sustainability. And what we mean by sustainability in this case is two items. Firstly, it's how much damage can be blocked, and B, how much damage can be healed. These two aspects of sustainability can be obtained from either A, a shield, or B, from healing. And so, in order for it to be considered a good team, it is recommended to at least have one shielder or one healer on your team so that your team can be sustained for long periods of time in the open world without having to eat food to heal or going to the Statue of the Seven. And so, having gone through all the different criteria of what makes a great team in Genshin Impact, we've finally reached the time to review what I consider to be my best team in Genshin Impact. Drum roll please, Nahida. And my best team in Genshin Impact is none other than the following team over here, which consists of Nahida, El Haytham, Zhongli, and the Raiden Shogun. I believe that this is my best team because it fulfills all the criteria that I've stated earlier. For example, El Haytham and Zhongli both have good vertical and lateral traversal. And of course, they're strong in the Spiral Abyss as well. As you can see over here, because of how well they are able to synergize with each other to provide that aggravate and spread damage, they can really make quick work of the robots here and finish this stage very quickly. In the open world, this team does not need to rely on their ultimates for strong damage. All the damage is done through Nahida's E, El Haytham's E, and the Raiden Shogun's E, with Songli's shield providing that extra defense down for the enemy. And last but not least of the criteria, we have sustainability. And in this case, sustainability is achieved with Songli's shield. Even though we do not have a healer on this team, we do not really need one because Songli is able to tank all the damage with his shield. And with that, with this team having fulfilled all the criteria that I previously mentioned, this is my personal best team in Genshin Impact. If let's say you do not have El Haytham or Zhongli, do not worry, I do have some other variations. For example, in this case, I substituted Zhongli and El Haytham for Yai Miko and Pai Tzu. In this case, this team also manages to fulfill the criteria previously stated, and as you can see here, they only require to use their E skill 
before the robot is taken down, before it even stands up. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed the video, do give a like, subscribe, and leave a comment on what you would like to watch for the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to take a look at my character builds, you can stay till the end where I showcase all of the builds of the characters that I've showed in this video. Thank you and see you next time.